right, class, settle down. If I could get you to stop talking and start listening. Everybody good? Exactly. Did you know that listening is something that great leaders know how to do? Uh, great leaders listen to their teams. Uh, great leaders listen to wise counsel. And great leaders know how to listen to God. Uh, if you want to be a great leader, you are going to have to master the art of listening. Uh, I heard Larry King once say, as a famous interviewer on primetime television with the news, uh, he said, I woke up every morning realizing that I was never going to learn anything unless I learned how to listen to others. Uh, I read another famous quote on listening. It says, when you talk, all you do is repeat the things that you already know. But if you'd be willing to listen, then you actually may learn something new today. Uh, as leaders and really just as followers of Jesus, the significance of learning how to listen and hear from God cannot be understated. I mean, have you ever met people that it almost seemed like they had a direct line with God? They were constantly hearing from God, enjoyed deep intimacy with God, and the way they made decisions and the way they talked and the way they carried themselves, man, it just oozed confidence because they know that they had spent time with God and had listened to God and heard from, from God. Some people have an easy time making decisions in life, even the hard ones, and they just seem at peace about it. They seem to be confident about it. I mean, have you ever wrestled with something in your life, a big decision or a stage of life, and you or maybe you've heard people say, man, I, I just wish that God would tell me the answer. <laughs> I just wish that I could hear from God. I wish that I could know what God was trying to tell me to do. Well, I want to talk about that today. I want to talk about a story, maybe the, the most famous story in all of Scripture, of a leader that learned how to listen. We're going to throw it back to Moses in the Old Testament, the book of Exodus, chapter 3. And I want to talk to you about something that all great leaders do. Leaders listen. Leaders listen. So as we read this, this story and, and text, these first four verses from Exodus chapter 3, it's the story of Moses and the burning bush. Uh, God did something to get Moses' attention, uh, and God is still doing this today. You may have never seen a burning bush before, but God is still doing clear and supernatural things to get the attention of his people, to get the attention of, of leaders. And it's almost like during this story, God shouts out to Moses. God does something really big. And, and maybe, maybe you've even used that phrase before where you say, man, I wish, that, uh, I wish that God would send a sign or like a burning bush or something like that and tell me what I need to do. I wish God would talk audibly. But the reality is that story and that phrase isn't as simple as it sounds. Moses understood how to hear from God. And if you don't know how to listen and how to hear from God, I would argue that God could already have a burning bush in your life and you may have walked completely by it. So let me read these verses to you and uh, let's unpack what it means to listen as a leader and how specifically to hear from God. Now here's, here's the story. Uh, now Moses was tending the flocks of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So he thought, I'll go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses answered, here I am. <laughs> Incredible story. Uh, it's worth a closer look. I'm sure you're familiar with that story. If you're familiar with the Bible, maybe you heard that story growing up and you had a little burning bush on the flannel graph uh, that you learned in Sunday school and maybe heard uh, a lot of sermons on this. It's a familiar passage, perhaps, but I want you to notice the chain of events. 
there are four things that specifically happen. I know it just seems random. I know it seems like God just did all of the work, but I would argue with you that listening and hearing from God is not a passive event. It just doesn't happen when you're minding your own business and all of a sudden it falls in your lap. So the first thing that I want you to notice is, is this. Uh, first, you have Moses doing life the way that he had always done it for years. You know, he was a shepherd and he was in the, sh in the fields watching after the sheep. This is a day much like every other day in his life. Uh, and it serves as a good reminder to us, you and I can seldom anticipate communication from God. You know, you don't just wake up one day and say, all right, it's the, it's the first Monday of the month, which means this is when I usually hear from God. You can't just walk out and say, you know, just something tells me today is the day I'm going to be ready. I'm going to be prepared. God is going to say something. Oftentimes when you read scripture, the settings in which we find that God speaks to people are not special occasions or when they're doing things out of the ordinary. It's when people are simply living their life. Regular, ordinary events, plain old Mondays and Tuesdays, they're just being faithful where they are. It just goes to show you the importance of even during the regular times, when you're at work or when you're riding in your car or when you're spending time reading scripture in the morning or, or when you're saying a prayer, be ready to hear from God. Be expectant because it very rarely comes with an announcement ahead of time saying, hey, at one o'clock today, you better be ready to hear from God because I'm going to be talking. So put your listening ears on and, and drop everything that you're doing. That wasn't what Moses was doing. He was doing simply what he always did. He was in the field watching after the sheep. So be looking for God to speak to you in the routine and the regular, not just in the crazy and the wild and the special occasions. Not just when you're at a conference or uh, in a worship service, but maybe when you're alone in the car, when you're spending time listening to worship music on your radio, or when you're in your room just having your Bible open, spending a few minutes in prayer. Think about that. We can seldom anticipate God's communication. So you always got to be ready. You always got to have a sense of expectation in your life. The second is this. Uh, God appeared to Moses and spoke to Moses through a burning bush. Now, that's a wild sight. Like if you walked into your front yard and there was a bush that was on fire, like that would be significant. But in this story, so a lot of people think, oh man, a bush on fire. But yeah, if there was a bush on fire in my front yard, then, then I would definitely stop and look at it. Uh, the fact that the bush was on fire was not what was so significant about that story. Don't get confused with the bush. Here's what God did. God brought something significant into Moses's life so that he could get his attention. It didn't have anything to do with the bush on fire. It had to do with God simply did something to get Moses' attention. And God is doing the same thing in your life and in my life. Now, it may not look like a burning bush, but God does things every single day to try to get our attention. He, he does things to try to pique our interest, to try to speak to us, to try to stir our hearts and affections. Uh, you know, in, in your life and in my life, even in Moses' life, maybe it's not a burning bush. Maybe it's a traumatic event. Maybe it's a, a difficulty. Maybe it's a crisis that you go through that God says, hey, I'm using this to try to get your attention. Heads up, this is your burning bush. Maybe it's a time in your life where you felt completely helpless and overwhelmed and you had nowhere else to turn and that's God shouting, hey, I'm here. I want to speak to you. I've got something to tell you. I want to communicate with you. I'm trying to get your attention. Maybe it's the opposite. Maybe it's God does something like blesses you in an unforeseen way. Like you never saw it coming as a blessing you weren't anticipating. And God even uses the good times and the blessings in our life to get our attention sometimes. And so anything that invades, you want to know how to hear from God, here's the deal. Anything that invades your life and demands your attention 
can be a conversation starter from God. Let's take a second and answer some questions together. Just, just four quick questions to get the conversation going. If you want to know how to listen, maybe you're missing out on something that God is doing. Here's the first question that I want to ask you. Uh, discuss this with the group. Jot it down in your notes, in your journal. Uh, what does it look like to have an attitude of expectation when you're spending time with God? I mean, if you really want to hear from God, what does that look like to, to yearn for that, to desire from that? Like when you're spending time with God, are you desiring and expecting to hear from him? Or are you just reading your Bible or saying your prayers just so that you can check it off your list? You're like, hey, every morning for 10 minutes, I'm going to read my Bible. It's what good Christians do. It's I'm going to learn some. It's what good leaders do. And, and so I'm just doing it to check it off my list. What's the difference between that and actually having a sense of anticipation and expectation to hear from God when he wants to speak to you? Uh, second is this. This is a good routine to identify. Uh, number two, what posture have you taken in the past that proved to be fertile ground for hearing from God? You know, some people say, when I get alone, uh, when I turn all the other distractions off. You know, some people say when I'm riding in my car and I don't have anyone to talk to or I can't have my phone out or, or not, not reading a book or anything, that's when I begin to focus. Some people say when I get up early in the morning, before everyone else gets up, before I turn the computer on, before the family gets up and the kids get going, or before my daily job responsibilities, that's when I can really hear from God, when it's just me and my Bible and my prayers and a cup of coffee or juice or whatever to get you going in the morning. For some people, it's late at night after everyone's gone to bed and you've got some time for your mind uh, to kind of to clear. But identify what are those seasons, what were the postures that you took that allowed you this opportunity to hear from God. Reproduce those in your life as much as you can if you find that pattern. Number three, what positive things have happened in your life that God could be trying to use as a conversation starter? Maybe it was a new job. Maybe it was a raise. Maybe it was an answer to a prayer. Maybe it was a relationship that you started. Maybe it was a connection that you made or an achievement that you grasped. Have you ever sat back to think maybe and the great things that are happening in my life, God is trying to use those things to get my attention. And then number four, what are the negative or the difficult things that have happened in your life over the past season that honestly, maybe you've never even considered it, but this may be one of the ways that God is trying to whisper to you and to get you to listen, to get you to hear something that he has to say about your life and your situation and where he has for you next. Take a minute, pause the video, and answer those questions. So the first two things were Moses realized that he could hear from God at any time, even when he was doing the mundane, even when it seemed like he was doing just the regular routine, and God can speak to you through the regular, mundane, seemingly insignificant things that happen in your life. Second, uh, Moses realized uh, that there was something that God brought into his life that demanded his attention. And he realized that that could be a way that God actually wanted to speak to him. The third thing is this, write this down. Moses decided to pay attention to the bush. I know that seems routine, but I think you would be surprised at the amount of times that God tries to get your attention and my attention and instead of leaning in and listening, we make the decision to simply walk right by it. Or maybe we don't even notice. Moses decided to pay attention to the event. He decided, Scripture tells us that he stopped and he walked over to the bush. Man, that is huge. That is a big statement. He stopped and walked over to it. He didn't just look at it and keep going. He didn't just look at it and see, oh, wow, that's odd. There's a bush on fire. Well, you know, we're in the desert, and it's a dead bush, and, and maybe the sun just got too hot. I don't know. Maybe somebody was driving by and threw a cigarette butt out the window, and it wasn't put out, and it caught Oh, well, you know, that's just, there's an explanation for it. No, he saw it, and he stopped, and he walked over to it. Like, 
What Moses did was the difference between experiencing something and exploring something. You get that? There's a big difference. And part of the reason why you hear from God or not hear from God is the decision that you make to experience something, just to see it as you pass by. Oh, there's a burning bush. Great. Or to walk over to it and explore it, to spend some time, to be intentional, to observe it. He went over to it, determined to explore what this might mean for his life what God may be trying to say to him and through him. And scripture says he walked over there and said, let, let me explore why this bush is burning yet not being consumed. Here's the deal. Great opportunity for you to listen and to learn something. Moses didn't have all of the answers. But what he did was he realized that as a leader, if you don't know all the right answers, at least you can start asking all the right questions. <laughs> Some people think that leaders are the ones that have all the answers. They're not. They're the ones that simply know when to ask the questions, and they know the right questions to ask. And so Moses, having experienced the bush from afar, said, well, wait a minute. There's something I don't know about this. There are some unanswered, unanswered questions I'm going to walk over and ask. I'm going to figure out why this bush is actually burning. There are life events that we experience, and then there are life events that we explore. I wonder how many times God was trying to get your attention, or God had something for you, or a, a, an answer to your question, or a next step that you had to take, and all you had to do, instead of walking by, was just to stop and walk over and explore what God might have for you. The events in our lives are experienced. We experience hundreds of things every day, but few are explored for what they might actually mean for our lives, for what they might mean on the deepest levels of who we are and what God might be trying to say to us. Man, I, I would encourage you, to do a, uh, an evaluation of the things that you see and you experience every day in life and be willing to take some time out and stop and move from experience to exploring. You never know what God may be trying to teach you. Here's the next set of questions. What areas of your relationship with God need to be explored more deeply? Uh, these are areas of life that would lead to your growth and your sanctification. There are areas of your life that may provide answers to some of the questions that you're struggling with right now. And I'm telling you, you, you won't know and you won't hear from God if you're just going to walk by what he's trying to do in your life. You've got to stop and explore it more deeply and more intimately. So what areas of your relationship with God need to be explored more deeply? You've explored some of them deeply. You've done a deep dive in some areas, but there are other areas that need some attention. Here's a frustrating question. Maybe you'll have some fun sharing this with your group. I know it's tough to relive these, but number two, have you ever missed something that God was trying to do or trying to speak to you only to realize it later? You know, hindsight is 2020, but maybe it was too late. Maybe you were kicking yourself from an opportunity that you had. Maybe it was an opportunity that God put in front of you to share your faith with a friend or to start a conversation with someone or to meet a need and in the middle of it, because you were so busy or you, you just experienced, you just saw it instead of exploring it, you ended up just walking right by it, only to realize much later, oh, God, that was a chance you gave me. That was a door you opened, and I didn't even explore it. I, I totally missed it. Third question is this, an important question to answer. In a hectic, busy world, I know we're all busy. This is, this is wild, man. Our schedules are packed out. How do you stay disciplined? not just to rush past things and overlook ways that God may be using to try to get your attention. And I, I don't want to look back in, on my day and realize that there were 12 burning bushes that I just walked past because I was looking at my phone or focused on what I had already planned to do that day or my mind was consumed with thinking about what was next and being effective and being efficient. How do you stay disciplined in a busy, hectic world where we are driven type A people, like we're here to get it done. How do you stay disciplined so that you don't miss what God may be doing?
something that he is calling you to explore and not just experience. Pause the video, take a minute, write some of those things down. I think those will be really helpful things to have a conversation about with some of the people in your group, or even just write down the answers in your journal to think about personally. Here's the last point to write down. Fourth, and, and, and this is critical, uh, what, what happened in this sequence of events. I, I know you may be thinking that hearing from God is, is just happenstance or you know, hearing from God is just something that God does all of the work. But I want you to listen to the, the sequence of events. Did you notice the following words in the last part of, of this story when Moses hears from God? Let me repeat it. It says, when the Lord saw that Moses had gone over to look. Oh man, this is huge. God didn't speak to Moses until Moses took the chance to go over and explore the opportunity that God had. God did not speak, nor does it appear that he was going to speak unless and until Moses approached the bush. God was not going to yell in a loud voice from the bush if Moses walked completely by it. I know you're waiting for a sign in the sky or for God to just smack you with it in the face, but that's not how God works. God will wait for you to listen, and until you stop, he won't speak. It wasn't until Moses stopped and walked over to the bush and paused that God began to speak. When Moses went to look, then God spoke. If you want to hear a word from God, a good step is to demonstrate your willingness to stop and listen. Sometimes God will not speak until you're willing to do those things. I know you want to hear from God without spending intimate time in prayer. It doesn't happen. I know you love to know all of the answers to life's toughest questions without spending hours searching through his word. Not going to happen. Moses didn't hear from God until he was willing to stop and listen. Stop and walk over. And when God saw that he had done that and shown the desire to hear from God, that's when God began to speak. I read a quote from a man by the name of Norton Sterrett. Uh, he was speaking to a group of college students that were getting ready to become missionaries. They decided that they had a calling on their life. They really wanted to pursue God. These were ministry students. And uh, he was a missionary in India and so was bringing some credibility to the table. And in 1948, he stood in front of this group of college students. And this is what he said. This quote has impacted and challenged me in so many ways. He said, how many of you who are so interested in finding out the will of God for your life, spend even five minutes a day praying for Him to show it to you. Oh, man. How many of you that sit here and listen to this video say, I want to hear from God. I want to experience God. I want to know what God has in my life. How many of you are even willing just to spend five minutes a day listening to God for those answers, voicing those questions to him. I believe that in this story, it is precisely those five minutes a day that equate to Moses walking over to the bush to figure out what was going on. Every day, you could prove to God that you want to hear from him, that you want to listen and grow in your relationship with him just by spending those five minutes in prayer, just by spending that time in the Word, seeking and listening. That could be your action today to prove to God that you are willing not to just walk by it, but to go and explore what God would have to say. A life led by God is a life that hungers from a, for a word from God. It was a life that is in relentless pursuit of that word. Every day you want to hear from God in a fresh way. Remember, hearing from God is not a passive exercise. It's not something where God does all of the work. 
Moses shows us those four things, those four keys from this story that put the questions and the answers together on what it means to actually listen and hear from God. Here's the last question set, and this is just a time, man, maybe some inflection for you. First question is this. Come on, be honest. How fervently have you prayed? How fervently have you sought God? I'm not asking you, have you asked the question and has it been on your mind? I'm asking you, how fervently have you prayed that you would hear from God? Number two, how passionately have you searched the scriptures? You want to hear from God? You want to know what he says? He wrote you a thousand page book. If you want to hear from him, stop listening for a voice and start looking for a verse. How bad do you want it? If you want to hear from God, you'll passionately study the scriptures and the word that he has for you will be there. The third thing, if you want to know the questions, if you want to know the answers, if you want to know what's next, how intently have you sought counsel? Have you gone over to other leaders? Have you gone to your team and asked these questions? Have you sought other people, maybe in your marriage, in your relationship with God, in your parenting style? Like if you really want to hear what God has to say, if you really want to know what the next steps are, seek out wise counsel. Seek out other godly men and women in community and throw these ideas off of them and listen to them on how you can get better and how you can grow. And finally, number four, How purposefully have you launched out in ways that afford God the opportunity to direct your steps? If Moses hadn't been willing to walk by and stop and explore and walk over and cultivate that ground, cultivate that opportunity for God to speak, then he would have never heard from God. And I earnestly believe that there are things that you can do to cultivate the ground in your heart, to provide an environment and an opportunity for you to hear clearer from God. What are you doing right now to see that happen? How hard are you straining and striving for that? I don't know of any great leader, great man or woman of God that doesn't want to hear from God, that doesn't have questions that they're calling out to God, that doesn't desire God, to show them what the next steps are. And if you don't learn how to listen, you will never hear. You will never learn. You'll never understand what God has for you. And I promise you, if you fail to listen, one day you will look back and see so many opportunities that you missed. So many things that God wanted to do in your life. And he could have done. And you could have experienced if you just learned how to listen. Listen.